y'all. Welcome back to my channel, At Home with Willowberry. Or if you're new, welcome. But where have you been? I'm so happy to see you here. My name is Valerie, and in today's video, it's time to break out the Valentine's decorations. I spend the day baking and decorating, and then later this evening, I make a delicious lasagna dinner. And on top of all that, we share more mobile home renovation updates. It was a fun-filled day of mobile home living here in the Virginia mountains, so if you're interested, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy the video. Tim has been super busy continuing the renovations here in our 1975 double wide mobile home. He hung the door here in what will be our oldest son's room and now he's about to start framing out the window and touching up the mud on the sheetrock that we had installed. We had sheetrock installed in three of the five bedrooms so far and we're getting real close to having the vinyl plank flooring installed in those three bedrooms but we still have just a little bit of work to finish up. We've already painted Granny's room, hung her door, and framed out her window, so her room is basically ready for new flooring. We just want to paint the other two bedrooms first, that way we can have Lowe's install the flooring in all three rooms at once. We're making great progress, y'all, and I'm getting so excited. So if you're ready, let's just go see what Tim is up to.
started renovating this mobile home back in April of 2023, so we're just about to come up on one year of renovations. We were hoping to be further along than we are by now, but between raising our boys, caring for Granny, and just living our everyday lives, well, it's taken a bit longer than expected. But we're getting there, y'all, one step at a time. Today, Tim is focusing on our oldest son's room. Right now, he's working on framing out the window, just like he did in Granny's room. The window won't take him long at all to frame out. The work that will take the longest to complete will be finishing the drywall. Tim needs to do quite a bit of touch-up work on the sheetrock before it's ready for paint. He thinks he has just a couple of days of drywall work left to do, then paint, and then it'll be my turn to get in there and start decorating. I've already started shopping, and I can't wait to get Granny and the boys moved into their new rooms. to save time by hiring a company to hang the sheetrock for us, but unfortunately we got duped and they didn't exactly finish the job. Tim is having to spend quite a bit of time going around and finding all the areas where there are screws and drywall tapes showing through the dried mud. He's having to sand and mud and sand some more in order to get the walls ready for paint. This is very time consuming and hence the reason we were trying to hire someone else to do it for us. Oh well, it is what it is. It's definitely a lesson learned, and we won't be making that same mistake twice, that's for sure.
y'all. Well, while Tim is continuing the work in the bedrooms, I'm going to go ahead and put up a few Valentine's decorations. I'm going to bake some cupcakes and make some candy-coated pretzels. Hopefully, I can finish all that before the boys get home from school. But first, a little visit with my sweet Willowberry. Since we're living in a construction zone, I don't plan on putting out too many decorations. I only plan to decorate a little bit here in the kitchen. February is a special month for me because it's my birthday month. I was actually born on Valentine's Day. That's how I got my name Valerie. Actually, the nurse named me. My parents were told I was going to be a boy, so they only had a boy's name picked out. Well, to everyone's surprise, I was born a girl. So by the third day, when they were ready to send us home from the hospital, well, I still didn't have a name. The nurse said to my mom, you know, you're going to need to come up with a name pretty soon or she's going to go home with baby girl on the birth certificate. Well, my mom wanted to name me Stacy, but my dad considered that to be a boy's name at the time. So that was a no-go. So the nurse was like, hey, she was born on Valentine's Day, so you should name her Valerie. And that's the story of how I got my name.
Valentine's decorations left over, so I decided to also decorate the front porch a bit. I'm not spending too much time out here these days. It's just been too cold, but I thought I'd bring a little festiveness to the outside of the house, too. Well, according to Punxsutawney Field, we're getting an early spring, so maybe we'll start getting warmer days headed our way sooner than later, and I can start spending more time out here on the front porch. This is my favorite spot in the whole house. I love to sit out here and watch the scenery. The mountain views are breathtaking to me, especially when the sun starts to set. I tell you what, I'm ready for warmer weather, that's for sure. So thank goodness Phil didn't see his shadow, and he predicted an early spring. At least I got to experience a little snow up here in the mountains, so I'm a happy girl. I'm also excited to plant a few fruit trees in the spring, and I have a ton of flower bulbs that I need to get planted, so I'm definitely ready for an early spring. a little time left before the boys get home from school so I thought I'd make some cupcakes as a special after-school treat. I'm just using a box cake mix today to make things quick and easy. It's a strawberry flavored cake mix by Duncan Hines called Perfectly Moist Strawberry Supreme and I'm going to be using a whipped cream cheese frosting. While the cupcakes are baking I'm going to make some candy dip pretzels so if you're ready let's get to baking. While the cupcakes are baking, I'm going to go ahead and make some candy dip pretzels. 
I found some strawberry and cream flavored Meltems at Walmart. These are very easy to use. You just slowly heat them in the microwave until they are melted. I'm going to be dipping pretzels today, but you could also dip strawberries, bananas, pineapples, or even marshmallows. Once I dip the pretzels, I'll then cover them with sprinkles before the candy coating completely hardens. y'all i'm just gonna let the candy harden on the pretzels while i pull the cupcakes out of the hot pan to cool down the boys will be home soon so i'll have to frost the cupcakes before they've completely cooled down if i want to surprise the boys it won't take long at all for the candy dip pretzels to harden and then i'll be able to plate them up i wasn't able to do much baking during this past holiday season but i'm going to try to make up for it during the month of february we never got around to making sugar cookies so that's definitely on my list I'd also like to try baking a German chocolate cake for the first time. We'll just have to see how it goes. 
We're also hoping to get the two other bedrooms ready to paint, but hopefully there will be plenty of time for baking. y'all after all that baking and candy making i've worked up a bit of an appetite so how about a taste test first i'm going to try the candy dip pretzel i really like the strawberry cream flavor of the candy coating but i'm second guessing the sprinkles that i chose the sprinkles have these pearl sized balls in them that are super crunchy and it's too crunchy to go with a pretzel so next time i'll just use plain old sprinkles like the kind you can find on an ice cream cone all right, well, next is the cupcake. It was very delicious. I think the cream cheese frosting was perfect to go with the strawberry cupcake, but the boys weren't too crazy about it. I think they would have preferred just plain old vanilla. So I'm sure that's what I'll use the next time. I tell you what, the cupcake was super moist and super messy. So I'm going to go get cleaned up and then go take a little break before it's time to start dinner. I'm making lasagna for dinner tonight, so don't go anywhere. We still have a lot of cooking left to do before the day is over.
Okay, y'all. The boys have made it home from school, and they were very happily surprised with the Valentine treats that I made for them today. But now it's time to get dinner started. Tonight for dinner, I'm going to try to make lasagna. I say try because I've only ever attempted to make lasagna just twice in my lifetime, and both times were a disaster. I'm following a recipe that I found on natashaskitchen.com. I picked this recipe because it looked and sounded amazing, and yet simple enough to make. According to the recipe, this easy lasagna is meaty, cheesy, and packed with flavor in every bite. And in fact, they call it the perfect lasagna. So I'm excited to give it a try. So if you're ready, let's get started. I've gotten started by adding salt to a pot of water that I'm bringing to a boil for the lasagna noodles and I'm browning the hamburger with one yellow onion. So while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and make the cheese filling. The recipe calls for cottage cheese, ricotta cheese, and mozzarella cheese, which will be mixed together with an egg and some parsley to create the cheese filling. Once I finish mixing that together, I'll just set it aside while I continue to make the meat sauce. I'll just be using a jar of store-bought sauce today. I think that's what makes the recipe so easy. You can always make your own homemade sauce, but I find the store-bought sauce is just a better solution for me. I don't have time to make it from scratch, and I think store-bought tastes just as good as homemade, but it's definitely a personal preference.
Okay, I've finished making the meat sauce and cheese filling, and the noodles have finished boiling, so now it's time to assemble the lasagna. I think I may have messed up on my layers a little bit, but hopefully it will still turn out good. I've also doubled the meat sauce and increased the number of noodles to make a bigger lasagna since I'm feeding a crowd of six. So fingers crossed that I haven't ruined this lasagna. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. All right, let's get this lasagna assembled and in the oven because I've got some hungry boys wanting to know when dinner's going to be done. We're also having salad and garlic bread with our dinner tonight. So once I get the lasagna in the oven, I'll get started chopping up the vegetables for our salad.
the lasagna is finally in the oven, where it will bake for about 45 minutes at 375 degrees. So while that's baking, I'm going to get our salad ready. In today's salad, we're having green leaf lettuce with red onions, cucumbers, carrots, and tomatoes with various salad toppings such as sunflower seeds, cranberries, bacon bits, and croutons. All right, time to chop some veggies. Salad's ready, y'all. So now I'm going to get the garlic bread ready to go in the oven. For the garlic bread, I'm using French bread that I picked up in the bakery department at Walmart. I'll first smear it with spreadable butter and then spread minced garlic all over the bread. I'll also sprinkle on some garlic powder as well as Italian seasoning. Would y'all believe Tim is actually the one who taught me how to make garlic bread back when we first got married? Tim is a really good cook. You know what I should do? I should get Tim on here to cook for y'all someday. 
We just bought a Blackstone not too long ago, and he's been making hibachi chicken at least once a week for us. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Tim to make hibachi chicken in an upcoming video, so be on the lookout for that, y'all. But first, let's finish our lasagna dinner. Back to making the garlic bread. Dinner is ready, y'all. It looks and smells delicious, and we can't wait to dig in. But according to the recipe, you should let your lasagna rest for about 30 minutes before serving. Well, I don't have 30 minutes to wait. I think I may have let it rest for about 15 minutes tops, but I have a hungry crowd waiting for their dinner. So as soon as the garlic bread is ready, we're going to go ahead and cut into the lasagna.
right, y'all. The moment is here. It's finally time to cut into the lasagna. Did I finally get it right? Will it come out in one piece or will it all fall apart when I try to serve it? Well, let's find out. Well, y'all, so far so good. Now for a taste test. Well, I can go ahead and let y'all know it's amazing. So cheesy and meaty and full of flavor, just like the recipe promised. Well, all right, y'all. I guess that's about it for another video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you real soon. I'll talk to you later. Bye, y'all.